let me turn off some mics here. I hope I got everything set up right now. Um, looks like the mic is working better. I had an echo going on. Um, my name is Tina Dillard with Quilting Affection, and welcome to Quilt Talk Tuesday. This is episode 10. I've been doing this for 10 weeks, and it's been fun, and I'm, I'm learning a lot as I go, um, as I film all of these. Um, hi, Jessica. I saw your, your little love there. Um, thank you for coming by and stopping by. Um, if you are following me, um, watching this show, please um, leave a comment or do leave loves or likes in the video on the video so I can see them and who was here, who was not here, um, and everything. If you're new to Quilting Affection Designs Facebook group, please follow me. Um, you'll get the latest information on what's happening around the Quilting Affection Designs Facebook group. Um, I'm just refreshing my page so I could see actually how we're doing here. Um, today we're going to be going over the wing clipper tool and by the Studio 180, it's Deb Tucker's Studio 180 Designs. Um, so we're going to be going over that today. That's the main topic. Um, we're going to also, I have a few announcements, but I wanted to catch up with you guys on what I've been up to for the last week. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see behind me, I have a disaster of a cutting table. I am working on my application blocks for my Step Tucker Studio certification. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite messy lately, and I still haven't got time to put them all everything away. I'm still working on stuff. Uh, also, I just finished up with a local quilt show by the Southern Comforter Quilt um, Guild. Um, they um, put on a wonderful little show. It's called the best little show in Mar Southern, I think it's in, in Maryland. It is a very little show. I think there was 12 vendors there this year. Um, but I love vending at this event because the guild is so supportive of the vendors. And I really appreciate that, um, everything with them. I got to meet a lot of people and that helped out a lot. Um, I introduced them to my, um, some new products that, uh, that came out. Um, I hung all my neat Island Boutique fab, um, um, designs up and everybody loves boutiques is finding out, I'm finding out. So that, that was fun to talk to people and see how they react to my quilts. Um, so it's really fun. If you would like me to come lecture for your guild, please contact me. Um, you can visit my website and I do have information on there. Um, I'm actually starting to set up some workshops to go with them. So ask me about those workshops also. Um, like I told you, we're going over the Deb Tucker Studio 180 Wing Clipper tool. And we're gonna be, before we do that, I do have an announcement. Um, on my latest project, let me switch cams here. This quilt is my newest project. It is called Rambling Star. And we are um, finally doing all the promo videos are out on this project. This is, it is eight month, it's an eight month program. It has two bonus blocks. It's various size blocks and fillers. It is made from the Island Boutique Plum Delicious Collection. And the center medallion is an 18 by 18 and is very popular um, quilt. And it uses the Studio 180 design rule, tools and rulers. Uh, um, the rulers in this that are being used in this is the Tucker Trimmer 1, uh, the Wing Clipper 1, the Square and Squared, the uh, 
the V block and the corner beam unit, um, ruler. All of those are used in this. So if you are a shop, this is a great way to teach these rulers to your customers. If you're new to these rulers, this is, I'm gonna have um, videos, monthly videos set up to show you how to use these rulers also in my um, new Rambling Star Facebook group um, that is now out there. Um, you can find the link for that in the description area also. Everything, all the videos in the quilt along will start in June. Um, so at the beginning of June, we'll be doing this. All my, um, if you wanna, if you're a shop and wish to order your whole, for wholesale, you need to contact Island Boutique sales representative, um, Island Boutique directly, or um, visit my website at quiltingaffection.com. If you want to get the fabrics for this quilt using the Plum Delicious Collection by Island Boutique, if you order now, you'll get it by July. I just got an email on that, so that will give you a kind of a date when you can get your um, fabrics. Um, now you can also just order the, the patterns also if you wish to do it in your own different colors. And if you do that, please send me pictures. I would love to see it. But for the rate, um, everybody else, I'll be selling the patterns starting May 1st and shipping them out May 15th. Um, so there's some, I still have, we still have a little time. So all the patterns won't be sh starting to be on sale from me until May 1st. So check with your local shop, see if they're gonna do the program. If not, suggest the program to them. Um, and if you like more information on the whole thing, um, visit quiltingaffection.com or check with Island Batik. They will have a lot of information also. So I'm, you can tell I'm really excited about that whole program. So back to today's project. Um, let me refresh my screen, see how we're doing. We are doing wonderful. So let's get busy. Um, so today, Dub Tucker Studio 180 Wing Clipper Tool. Wing Clipper Tool makes flying geese, and I have made several flying geese. These are all from my challenge projects. Um, this is one of the blocks. You can tell it's just nothing but flying geese. So very easy to put together. Um, and they do make various sizes. The wind clipper makes various sizes also. Flying geese are so much fun to make using this ruler. Um, the ruler comes in two different sizes. This is the Queen Clipper one, and it comes in 11 different unit sizes from one and a half, a half to a one inch finished, and then it goes in increments of halves. The Wing Clipper two starts with um, three four, I'm checking my notes, three fourths to by um, one and a half. And they're based on the fourth or three fourths when finished. So depending on your project, what you're making, the you'll probably be making most of them with the wing clipper one. Now you'll probably notice that it looks a, a little like bumpy and stuff on the back. That's Invisigrip. Um, it's a great product to put on the back of your rulers to help them from non-slip, um, slipping. So remember Invisigrip, you can buy it from, uh, Amazon has it, I, I picked it up, a couple um, things up for like 16, so it, they're fairly cheap. Um, they're like eight something a piece. So, and I really suggest it. I bought extras because I have more um, Studio 180 rulers to put together, um, put the Invisigrip on. 
um, like you could actually, I had it backwards. You could actually see it. So that is what's on the back of this, and it does help with the grip. It makes it less slick, so it does really help. So today we're going to be making two different sizes. I've decided to do two different sizes to show you what you can do with one ruler. Um, so we're going to start off, we're going to make the two and a half, two by four, which is a normal size unit. And we're also going to um, go and do the um, one by two unit. So when you get your ruler in the package, you'll have instructions. Make sure you read these instructions really well because they'll show you how to use the ruler. Um, they also have a chart on your, if you're, what sizes you need for the ruler, such as what we're gonna be making is a one, one by two. So our cut sizes of the units will be one and a half by two and a half. And you will need for a large square, a three and a half, and a, for your four, two small, uh, for your four small units, you'll need two inches. And then for like our two, um, two by four, it'll be two and a half by four and a half. And so we're gonna need the five and a half for our large square. And we're also gonna need the three inch block for that. Um, so that is basically that how that looks in the in the instructions um you will also see that you get um how to make the units and the starting on the on the, the cutting instructions for the rulers um and it continues on the back and shows you for right-handed and left-handed. So it doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, they work for both. Um, there's also additional technique sheets you can pick up from Studio 1A Designs or a dealer. And uh, your local quilt shop may have some also to um, make different ideas. You have different ideas you can do for the wing clipper, such as the picket, pickets and quickets um, technique sheet, um, the um, the houses are also used with this ruler. So it, it's a very nice ruler, and it has different uses. So let's get started. We're going to start with the smaller unit first and then work into our, our larger one. They're made the same way. I'm just gonna show you how to um, assemble the units and then trim them down. So we're gonna start with the one and a half by two and a half unfinished unit. So I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna do the check. I have no technical support today, so I'm doing this on my own. So please bear with me. I'm just seeing if there's any questions or comments as I'm going. So with my trusty pencils, marking pencils, rotary cutter, my quilter's magic wand, which you can get from your Studio 180 Designs, very handy, and I've already pre-cut my large square and my two small squares. Well, four squ small squares. So we have four purples. Lay those down. And I'm going to make sure I can, you guys can all see what we're doing. Now remember, these are, <clears throat> this is a three and a half large square. And these are two inch um, squares. So we're gonna take the purples and we're gonna mark them with the magic wand. We're gonna make sure we got the back and it's hard sometimes on the, I, the batiks, all batiks, to see what's the back. Um, just do your best to figure it out if you don't know. I'm gonna use my white chalk pencil and I'm going to mark 
uh, di uh, two diagonal lines. These are going to be my stitching lines down the center. Let me um, pull this camera in so you can see a little bit better on what's going on. So, and please leave comments if you can't see anything, can't hear anything. I appreciate it if anyone would let me know. Um, draw, draw a diagonal line down one side. Make sure you can see it. And then a diagonal line on the opposite side. So you're going to do that with all these. So you have a diagonal line, a, your center diagonal line, and you're just drawing two lines on the outside that are to our quarter of an inch. That's what this um, magic wand does for you. So if I lay this down on this ruler, you can see this center groove line is in the middle, and that is a quarter of an inch from this side to the outside, from this side to the uh, this side. So no matter where you put it, you're gonna have a quarter of an inch line. So let me show you this again. So I'm checking my units, and I think that's the front. So I'm gonna lay that groove line down the center from point to point here, point to point, and draw a quarter of an inch on this side and I'm gonna put my thumb in the middle so I'm sorry if I block the view and I'm gonna I move my fingers too much I have the reline up and we're gonna draw it on this side so we have a quarter of an inch from the center to this side and a quarter of an inch from this side now we're going to continue to be doing all four because we're going to need all four. And we're going to do this again. And it seems like you need flying geese for about any block you make anymore. Um, they're very popular. So it's great to have a tool for cutting down and trimming your units. And what the Studio 180 has done is they designed the rulers to make them oversized. And with the oversized units, you can then use the ruler to trim them down. So that was what makes it wonderful about these rulers. So we have all four down. So we're gonna take our large unit now, set that aside and we're going to place, I want to make sure I got the right side, one unit so the points match up here. And we're going to overlap. I think I may have this. Yep, that one's that's bigger. Let me grab my ruler real quick. I need to trim those down just a hair. I cut them wrong. So you want to make sure you double check your your measurements because you want to make sure you have the right size. And they should be two inches. And I miss, I messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this up real quick, like and. That's why you always double check as quilters or as seamstresses or whatever, we double check our work. So that is the correct size, that's two inch. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm just lining up from the center to correct my, my view, I'm just hoping you can see what I'm doing here is, let me move this over more so you can actually see, I think you can't see it. I am lining up my ruler on the two inch line and I'm lining it up directly in the center of this point here and I'm just trimming them that way. That way I don't have to redraw my lines. I will double check them, but now they're two inch units. We'll keep doing that. We'll keep, we need to adjust all of these. I'm glad I caught that. This didn't seem right when I was putting them on there. So 
this, like I said, you need to keep a good check on what you're doing. And one more. I'm just like, again, I'm saying, I'm just lining this up down the center, eyeballing my point there, and then doing a quick little trim. And now if I go back and I double check my work, my pencil marks are still the same. So all, and I'll double check them all because you want to double check your unit work if you have to change something. Yep, and they're all correct. That one's correct also. So once I do these two more, we will start with the sewing process. And it's a very simple, no waste method of sewing the, the fly yeast together. So what we're gonna do is take our three and a half, and I will double check that one too, while I'm, while I'm at it double checking, and it's three and a half. Very good. So we're gonna take two of our purples. We're gonna lay one on the top here, and we're gonna lay the other at the bottom. But you may want to just take a couple inches in, or a couple threads in from the outer edge on both sides. So now that we have those on, we can sew down the diagonal, one diagonal line, and then turn around and come back and do the other diagonal line. So what we have that together, let's go ahead and do our bigger unit, which is the two and a half by four and a half unfinished. And we'll get that one ready also. I'm gonna double check my measurements, but I'm pretty sure these are the ones that are correct. And they should be three inches, and I am correct. So, we are going to go ahead and mark these. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my ruler and run my diagonal. I'm double checking to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And we're going to mark. This time I'll use my regular pencil because I can see it better. And just draw a line here. And that's the one problem about being left-handed. It's hard to see around my fingers. <laughs> so we, are, we have one marked. And we're gonna chain piece these together since we've got, we're gonna make two units. And I'm doing it again, I'm just dry, taking the center mark of the rule, the magic wand and going down the center. Now I'll show you how to do this with your regular ruler if you do not have the magic wand, but I highly recommend it because it does give you an accurate quarter of an inch on each side and you don't have to switch your rulers around. So with the regular ruler, you have a quarter of an inch line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this stuff out of the way so I can lay this down, is you have, you're gonna take this diagonal line that's your quarter of an inch and you're gonna run it down exactly the center like we do with the wand. And then you're gonna draw a line from on this side. Now if you flip it around, you can do the same thing again, taking that quarter of an inch line and running it down. So you're gonna take that diagonal line that's quarter of an inch, lay it down on that center line, and then draw a quarter of an inch draw your line down that's a quarter of an inch from that center. So you do have your quarter of an inch lines. It's just make, the wand makes it easier so you don't have to flip your things around. You can do it all at once. So you line it up point to point, draw one line, draw another line. That's how easy it is. So we're gonna also 
So with this now, we're gonna take these, we're gonna take two of those, and this is gonna be your five and a half, and that is a five and a half. And you're going to take two of these small ones, and you're gonna do the same thing as we did with the small ones. Take it in just a little bit. And you're gonna line up the other side also, and line up your lines, and then you're gonna begin sewing. So we are ready to start sewing. So let's go ahead and do the small one, and then we'll chain piece it to with the, the larger one. So I'm going to, oh, you can't see my sewing machine. So I'm gonna flip this camera up so you can see. There you go, you can, now you can see my, my sewing machine. So I'm gonna take this, this thread tail out and I'm going to line up and drop my needle. I'm gonna sew on those diagonal lines that we have talked about. Give you a little bit more view. You can't see the camera, the whole thing right away, but you'll get the idea when I get it done. You're just sewing on those diagonal lines all the way down. So we're gonna be doing this. Stay as, do as slow and easy, um, moving the fabric if, if it ju adjusts wrong, and you'll be just fine. Okay, I have one down, one sewn. Now I'll take the larger unit, and we'll do the same thing. We're gonna sew down one side. I'm just raising my presser foot up and we'll begin sewing on that line. And if you need to stop and adjust, remember to take your time and make sure everything is accurate. I have been doing that a lot lately and it's been paying off a lot and making a really nice unit. If you just take your time, this is not a race, and you want to take your time to get the most accurate blocks you can get. So, I have my scissors. I'm going to take this smaller piece and we are going to butt this up to the other one and begin. We're going to flip it around and we're going to go sew down the other side. Um, you can see that we've got one side done. Now we're going to sew on the opposite side. On those diagonal lines, line it up, press, I move my presser foot up, and I'm gonna begin sewing on those lines. Now I'm going to clip, and clip that one. And that's what this chain piecing is. You just back-to-back -back sewing on your units. And it makes it a lot easier to um, put your units together and a little bit faster. Um, so you can take your time on making sure your line, your straight, your lines are straight and accurate when you're sewing. So I'm going to do this the same one on this one. My little again with me, I think. I can't find it. I'll be hand pressing these um, units. I usually use this a little presser I have for um, doing this. So now I'm going to raise my needle and I'm going to cut my thread. So all of our units are now sewn. My dogs are on the floor at my feet, so I'm trying to avoid them. So we have, we have our line, our, both of our units sewn. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them apart. And on the wing clipper, it has a vertical line across that you can use for your quarter of an inch. 
So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna take this camera and I'm gonna move it back over so you can see. And I'm going to take this ruler and I'm gonna place it down on my sewing lines. And you should have a line that goes straight down and right all near that quarter of an inch. So you're gonna go cut it across so you'll have two units. And I'll do it again for the smaller unit. We're gonna do the same thing. Take that quarter of an inch line, line it up on our threads, or just on the outside to line up corner to corner, point to point, and we're going to go across. So now you can take, you have your two units. You're gonna take your units and you're gonna fold them back, just like that. So you have one, and normally you would take these to your sewing machine, your ironing board, but mine's way on the other side of the room, so we're not gonna go get up and move around on this video. So we're just gonna just hand press. So you're gonna take those and you're gonna hand press them. Now to get them ready for sewing, you're going to place your last two you, um, squares and you're gonna place them just like so on your unit. And you're going to make sure, and you, you will take it in a couple inches here and there, and you're gonna sew on this line and then follow up on the other line. So we're gonna lay it down point to point here in the middle of our wings. That's how you do it. So that's how you would do that. So I'm gonna put these up here and we're gonna do the same thing for our larger um, flying geese that we're putting together. So we folded those back and we are going to place this one, like I said, your point down here to point down here on the purple and then right in the middle of our two wings. That's one. Then you're gonna fold the wings back on this one. Just give it a good nice finger press. That sometimes all that's all they need. And then do another one. And then point your orange point and then diagonal straight up so you have a cross. So your orange point to purple point are lining up and going straight up. So let's begin chain piecing these four and we can then start trimming. So we are going to Drop our needle, drop our foot. Make sure to grab our tail because you don't want anything underneath. And just start taking your time and sew across on those diagonal lines that you have made. That's one. So in the next unit, you're gonna do the same thing. Make sure everything lined up, lift your presser foot, and make sure it's underneath, and go straight down the line. So this is what you call chain piecing. You're just continuing piecing all the units together. And then we're gonna take the, our larger units and we're gonna do the same thing. <clears throat> You can also sew it, if you choose to, you can flip it around so your wings are close to you and you can start sewing down that way also. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Sometimes it is easier to do it where the wings are closer to you so you can actually see if you're lining up correctly. 
So now we're going to take this unit and we are going to sew down the line on this side. So all four are being sewn. So next we'll start on the opposite side. So we'll go ahead and trim these three apart and take them apart. And I didn't get quite underneath the, um, the threads gathered down there. So you wanna make sure you don't get that. Um, so you wanna make sure you grab your threads and pull them back to make a nice clean unit. Um, so that is what happens when you don't grab your threads. So now I'm just gonna do on the other side of with our small units is to sew down those diagonal lines. This one off since we know we need to do this side can't forget that one and we're going to line up and go straight down the lines so no matter what way you want to sew them on with the wings away from you or the wings close to you it doesn't really matter it depends on how you're how you feel comfortable with everything so We are almost done, and I'm going to go ahead and lift my needle up, and ta-da, we have four flying geese units to be ready to cut apart. And these four, we're going to double. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did before, is we're going to cut down the center of these units. And we're gonna line up. I'm pretty sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm just double checking. And cut down the middle. You now have two more. So you'll get four flying geese out of one large and four small squares, which is so, it makes it really nice so you're not piecing triangles together and everything, you just, you're, you're actually making four at once and that saves so much time in the long run. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the large ones also. I love doing the no, um, no waste method of flying geese um, because of the fact that it, it, it goes faster. And four. So now I'm gonna take the ruler and put it aside for a second. I'm gonna trim this thread down here it doesn't need to be in the way. So now we're gonna take our last wing and we're gonna fold it back. So this is what it looks like. Now it's, remember it is oversized. We will be trimming that in a second here. So let's go ahead and continue folding these back and hand pressing. these units. So we do have four flying geese and two and a half, we'll, which will be two and a half by four and a half when finished. So do a Facebook check. Make sure there's no comments. See how we're doing. 
and we're going to fold these ones back also. These are going to be one and a half by two and a half when we finish trimming them. And I'll show you how to do those first since these are the smaller units. And this is where the wonders of the wing clipper tool come in handy. So now I'll explain, let me explain the wing clipper tool for you. <clears throat> so for the wing clipper tool, sorry, my nose is itchy today. I don't know why. Um, you have lines and if you can see, I'm hoping you can see these lines. Um, I don't know if you can see them. Let me try it this way. There we go. Now these lines indicate where each mark would be. So one and a half by one, two and a half by one and a half. So that's what we're gonna be using. And then you have a three and a half by two and then four and a half by two and a half. And that's the second line we'll be using. So let's start with the two and a half by one and a half. And we'll be trimming the small little purple wing guys first. Now I'm gonna be doing this left-handed. You can do it right-handed by just looking at the instructions. And I will look at the instructions in a second to help you with that, just to show you two of them that, I, that were trimmed that way. I'm not very good at left uh, right-handed, but we can work on that. So with left-handed people, you're going to lay your wing clipper down like so. And then you're going to, oh, I gotta make sure I flip it back around. Your ruler on the, you're gonna take this diagonal line and let me see if I can get it zoomed in a little bit better for you. Let me see if that's better. Yeah, well, they have diagonal lines from going down from our, this is our one and a half to two and a half line. And you have diagonal lines that go across those lines. So you're gonna use those lines first. And we're gonna make sure we stay in the one and a half, which we are going to. And we're going to now line to make sure all those diagonal lines are lined up before we stitch. I may have to stand up to see this better. So, there we go. Now, with the left handed, you're gonna, and with the other, like the other um, rulers I've shown in the past videos, you're gonna go up and across when you're going, you're, when you have everything lined up. So we're gonna start with up and across. Now, we've got that done. We're going to take our geese. We're gonna rotate it 180 degrees. One hundred and eighty degrees all the way around, and you're going to line up on your one and a half by two and a half on the clean edge side. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave comments. I will answer them and um, as soon as I can. Show you um, as soon as we get done here. So I've lined everything up, and you can see that we have a V point here that goes around. We have one and a half by two and a half on our clean edge. So we're just gonna go up and around. And you'll notice you are not taking that much waste away. So we're not really over oversized, we're just right. So this is a clean one and a half inch unit. I'll do one, one more left-handed and then we'll do right-handed also. So, and these would look better when they, if they were trimmed completely, I mean pressed completely in with the iron. 
So, okay, so I've lined everything up. We're in the one and a half by two and a half, which I gotta adjust just a little bit more. You wanna make sure you got a perfect little unit here. That is pretty darn good. So we're gonna go ahead and do an edge here and an edge across. Now we're gonna flip it 180 degrees and we're gonna clean this up. We're gonna line everything, our clean edges up on those one and a half by two and a half lines. And you should be in the center again. And we are very much together. So, let's see if I can do this right hand. Let me look at the rule. Okay, right handed. Right handed people, when you're doing this, um, we are going to flip this to the bottom. And I'm going to do this right handed, so bear with me. So we're going to line this up just like this. We're going to have your flying geese this way. And we're going to line up our V's very carefully to make sure we have our one and a half, our one and a half by two and a half in there. Now, Let's try this. Aha, one cut and across. So you're just doing it the opposite way, except you're laying the flying geese down. So you can do this right-handed or left-handed and the instructions are great to show you how to do it. So we're gonna flip this around 180 degrees as the with the Studio 180 is called. And we're gonna line these rule the lines up like we did in on the left-handed side with the clean edge. One and a half by two and a half. And run across. Oh, I should do this right-handed. Sorry. And up like that and across. So you can do this left-handed. These are so cute of this size. So now we are going to trim this one one more time and I'm gonna flip it around and We are going to make sure our V's are lined up and we're in pretty much in our quarter, our lines there. There we go. And we're gonna do right-handed one more time. Up and, oops, and across. That was not a very clean cut as much as I wanted, but it is cut. We're going to flip it around. Yeah, that's looked pretty good. We're gonna flip it around and we're gonna line up also. And just do our cleanup cut on this side. And then I'll show you how to do the, the two and a half. So I'll do a couple of those and we'll wrap this up. And you're gonna go up and across. So that's how you do the smaller ones. Now the larger ones are much easier and I'm just gonna do these in the left handed because it, it is much easier for me. <laughs> so let's, let's do it left handed. So we're gonna do two and a half. These are gonna be two and a half by four and a half lines. So I'm lining it up left-handed way and voila, where it's lined up perfectly. We're gonna go up 
and across. So when you're cutting these, remember up and across, no matter if you're doing left-handed or right-handed. I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees and we're gonna get a two and a half by four and a half unit. And we are set. So there's your two and a half by four and a half. I'll do one more and we'll call this good. Yeah, I think you guys have the point of how to trim these using the Studio 180 design rulers. And if you ever have problems, you can refer back to the video. Deb Tucker has very great videos on YouTube also. And you can also refer into your instructions for the ruler also. So I'm gonna line this up, up, up and across. And we're gonna rotate 180 degrees. And the more you make of these units, um, the easier they get. And like I've said before, take your time, patience on sewing and cutting, and you will get a very precise, crisp flying geese unit out of the, the wing clipper tool. Um, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about this tool today. Um, if you have any more questions on the tool, please leave them in the comments. Um, I'm gonna double check my comments now to see if anything's updated. And it doesn't look like anything's there. Um, so we are pretty good. So next week, I think we're gonna make um, we're gonna go ahead and do my next block in the Blockbuster series. We're gonna do the Block 11 um, Searchlight. And it uses the corner beam unit, which is in my, um, in my um, newest pattern uh, on the design wall. Um, the, it is in the, the green in the center of the medallion that is called the corner beam. The corner beam just sits in the, it's just beamed to the corner instead of in your triangles or your V block, you're gonna go straight up and down. These are just pointing to the corners. So we're gonna make those next week. So I think that's gonna be a fun and informative one for you guys. It's fairly easy to do. And I can, we'll go through and we'll make this block up. So if you wanna quilt along, please feel free to, um, I'll be, I'll be happy to have someone there to sew along with and ask questions. Um, if you ever have any other comments or questions or even a suggestion on what you would like to learn on my Quilt Talk Tuesdays, please feel free to um, leave them in the comment section, even if we're off Facebook Live, and I will um, immediately answer your questions also. So I wanna thank you for all coming and I hope to see you, um, let's go back to the other video. There we go. Um, we'll, and I hope to see you um, next week on Quilt Talk Tuesday. We're just going over the, the corner beam, making a block. Um, I hope you all have a safe and wonderful week and please the people in the Northeast stay safe with all the snow you guys are getting. Um, I do have a lot of um, fellow quilters up in that area, so please be safe and stay warm. I'll see you next week, and have fun. Bye.